Lissa Productions. Today we're going to be talking about time-dependent voltages, um, which is sort of an in the beginning of AC circuits, alternating current circuits. Time-dependent voltage, instead of a capital V and I, we're going to use a lowercase. It has some time dependence. And sort of the standard thing we'll have is a trig function, so there's some amplitude, V0 times cosine omega t plus some phase associated with the voltage. And we'll have a time-dependent current, which is some amplitude, cosine, same frequency, omega t, but possibly a different phase, phase for the, the current there. We write them as these cosine functions here. That phase basically tells us where this, at what time this goes to zero. Is it zero at time t equals zero? Is it one half a period, a quarter a period, or some other fraction? That's what the phase does for us there. And we're going to be looking at circuits. Again, our standard thing, and we're going to be looking where we have an input, so we have some input time-dependent voltage and some output time-dependent voltage. And something that characterizes what we do in this class is that the frequency, the omega n, the input frequency, and the, omega, and the output frequency are the same. They both just equal some omega circuit does not change the frequency. So we've got the same frequency on both the input and the output side. We just change the voltage, so we can change the amplitudes, we can change the phase, but the frequency doesn't, isn't affected by that. And we can look at this here. Let's um, take that circuit. And let's take a, draw a cosine function. Let's just have some voltage here. So let's have here some input voltage, which comes in. So here is our Vn of t. There's one period. There is the amplitude Vn minus Vn. So there's the input voltage as a function of time. The output voltage doesn't have to have the same amplitude. It can have a different amplitude. It also doesn't have to be in phase. So um, let me just say it's 90 degrees difference because that's pretty easy to draw. So it's going to minimum here. It'll peak there. So it's going to look something. I drew it with the same amplitude because it's convenient, but it doesn't have to be. So there's V out. So. Maybe it's a little bit less than this one, not quite the same. Maybe it's 95%, and it's not in phase. One of the important things that we'll measure is clearly the amplitudes, V in and V out. And we'll do that on an oscilloscope in the lab, and we'll see how to do that. The other thing that we'll do is we'll measure the phase difference between these, which is basically, if we want to measure the phase difference, it's the distance from one peak to the other. So there's some delta t. And you could immediately tell me, well, you went from there to there. Why didn't you go from the, that peak over to here? And of course, that would also be absolutely correct. But the convention is we're going to take the shortest distance between two peaks. So this one is clearly shorter than that one. The other thing we're going to worry about is which one peaks first in time. Here, the input voltage peaks before the output voltage peaks. So here, the input voltage is said to lead the output voltage. We can also say, because the output is behind, the output lags the input. It peaks later in time. So that's a terminology that you'll run across, leading and lagging. And it basically is which one is going to peak first in time. And that delta t we'd like to convert into a phase difference. So there is some phase difference, delta phi, which is related to that delta t. And it's basically delta t over the period is the fraction of the 360 degree phase difference that we could have. So delta t over the period times 360 degrees 
is the phase difference. So if we go into the lab and we can measure the period and we can measure that time difference, then we can convert it into a phase difference in degrees. Or if you want to do it in radians, we put 2 pi there instead of 360, but we could measure that. And if we have a phase difference where something is leading something, we say it's a positive phase difference. If it's lagging, it's a negative phase difference. That's a lot of what we'll do here, is we measure this phase difference by measuring a time difference, knowing the period, we get a phase difference. And that phase difference, the magnitude of the input and the magnitude of the output voltage, are the three things that we're going to need to sort of characterize what's going on with circuits that, AC circuits that have an input and an output. So that's what we're going to be worried about measuring. And the most tricky one is just this phase difference. And it just, it's not hard, really. It's just going to be a little more finicky in the lab, and you're just going to have to spend a little extra time doing it because you've got to measure a time difference. The trick is, obviously, you measure the time difference. You know the frequency, which gives you the period because you've set that. You put it into a spreadsheet, and the spreadsheet calculates everything for you. So you're really just measuring a time difference. It's not a big deal. And that then converts into a phase difference. The one thing you have to be very careful about when doing this is your sign convention. You just want to make sure that if you're measuring the difference between the output and the input, make sure that's a negative time there because the output is lagging. If the output is leading, it's positive. You've got to follow the same convention. Otherwise, you'll introduce a minus sign. And you'll probably catch that when you do it, but it's better just to think about it a little bit as you're doing things. So that's sort of an introduction to time-dependent voltages here.